Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up next, Leo is on vacation, but I'm not going to host iPad Today alone. We have Strange Man coming out from behind the curtain. Up next on iPad Today. You're a strange man. <laughs> So I called you a strange man, and I don't know if that's exactly how I think of you on a day-to-day -day basis, but a lot of people might not know that Brian Burnett here is the man who runs the controls. He's, at yep. the, he's the technical director of iPad today. I'm usually the one hiding in the shadows and playing videos like that. If you ever see a Corgi <laughs> video show up on the live stream, it's usually my fault. So That's thank right. you, Anthony. Now, He's covering for me well. Anthony, yes, thank you, Anthony, by the way, who uh, who does a lot of other shows that I work on and is probably really sick of me at this point uh, because now he has to do the show too. Uh, but no, it's it's we've heard your voice. It's not as if you're sort of some yes. private, secret person that nobody knows about. But I thought, well, Leo's gone. Who better than to be front and center than our third host? Right, and I, you know, I wouldn't say I am a dedicated iPad guy because okay. I did pay for this iPad. This is an iPad 3, but I rarely use it. It's my fiance's. So mm -hmm. if you see anything that seems out of the ordinary or strange, as you introduced me as, then it, it's probably not mine. It's probably. <laughs> so, okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about your, so iPad 3, so that is what, like a year and a half old-ish at this point? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, think so. I bought it brand new. All right, so you didn't, and you didn't have an iPad before that? No, no, but like most people here at Twit, I like to play with a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So I have an Android phone, I've got my MacBook Air laptop, but I have a gaming PC with Windows 7 on it, and I wanted to try iPads. And yeah. So I got this a while yeah, back. You, all right. So you 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 didn't uh, get an iPad when they first came out. You waited a couple a couple cycles. Right. You got it, but yet you say it's still not something that you're using on a daily basis. And why do you think that is? Because you have so many other gadgets to play with, or what? Um, I think it's just more my tendencies. Like I also mm -hmm. played with. Uh, I has let me borrow his Nexus Seven for about three months, mm -hmm. and I I really enjoyed using it. But all I ever used it for was checking Twitter or watching a few videos on the couch or something. But if I needed to do anything with like substance, where I needed a keyboard or something, I just always go to my 13-inch MacBook Air because sure. it's kind of like my. It's light enough for me to walk around my apartment with, but not so you know, limited as to just like uh, consuming videos and stuff like that for me. Totally. Which is, this is, I've got the same one. At yeah. least the same size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's 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 true. Between the two of these, I feel like I'm pretty much covered. Oh. I was mentioning uh, before. And there's this on the back of it. And what? And now is that? Are you like a? Is that a koala? No, what, that's a uh, Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Oh, I see. So okay, all right. Not my. I didn't put that on there. You want everyone to know that that's your fiance's little choice there because Not that I have anything. There's nothing wrong with Lilo and Stitch. I don't I even just, know who Lilo uh, and Stitch are. Yeah, Disney. they're in a. Disney, Disney movie, movie of some yeah. kind. <laughs> so, Brian, I've got an interesting story for you. I okay. mentioned that I was down in Los Angeles over the weekend before we started the show, just, you know, visiting a friend. It's not that far from San Francisco. And I went out to a party, and there were a lot of people there, and, you know, I, you know I'm eating a burger and, you know, getting a beer, and my phone's there, and then all of a sudden my phone isn't there, and it's like, where's my phone? And everybody's got an iPhone. Right. Because it's just, I don't know, one of those parties. And finally, it was like, well, it kind of came time to leave, and, and I couldn't find getting it. getting really worried about it? Well, I, you know, I, yeah. And, and the batteries had run out, and, it, you know, it was, so it was like, if you called it, nothing was going to happen. Right. And again, it was, there was sort of a lot of people, and people were moving things around. So anyway, I was sort of like, went home dejected, thought, well, you know what I'll do is I'll look it up on find my iPhone on my iPad. Oh wow, so you actually left before you even found it. Well, I looked, you know, Everywhere. there's only so long I could, yeah, and I figured so did you think somebody might have put it, it in their or? purse. It wasn't the sort of thing, it wasn't the kind of party that anybody swiped my phone. I really oh, don't yeah. think maybe that, that was what's just going on. Swiped it, by it probably mistake, just looked yeah. like somebody else's and then all of a sudden they're gone and maybe they don't realize it because right. it's dead, so they don't see that it's somebody else's wallpaper. Right, right, right. So then I thought, all right, well, uh, you know, I haven't used find my iPhone in a while, but it should it should ping 
as the phone is dying, right? Like I should, I could at least see the last place that it was seen. Oh. So at least I, I would have an idea if like it's still at the party or if it's some somewhere else because this was a little bit uh, farther away from where I was staying, and. And it and it doesn't do that because uh, find my iPhone doesn't work that way. It doesn't right. isn't passively just, getting your GPS. It does it right away, and it's like if the battery's dead, you can't. Exactly. See it. Yeah. So I sort of took to Twitter and said, oh, wouldn't it be nice if there was like a pass? There was some way for your phone before like five percent battery or less to just send out like send a, out a little like SOS. I'm this not is sure. the last place I've been. Yeah, because yeah. I know that it doesn't work that way, but I was sort of venting. Turns out in iOS eight it will. Oh, really? That is actually a feature that is coming to iOS 8. I didn't realize it. I guess probably just because there are so many other features that it, it got lost in the shuffle. But yeah, um, because I had tweeted about this, I got a lot of responses from people saying, it won't help you this time, but right, in right. iOS 8, that will actually be something that our phones or our iPads, whatever is running uh, the software, will be able to do. That makes sense. And, yeah. and, and also, uh, one of my worries has always been if my phone got stolen and somebody took the battery out of it or something like that, like, how would you find it? But I guess... I guess you would have to wait for your phone to die before it would send out the location. Because Android has something similar. It has the, the manager where you can find your phone and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, do, you know, I, do you know if it does that? Sort of like a last cry for help before a phone or a device dies? To just send out something to the universe? Right. I'm here! <laughs> it's almost like a flare gun. Before okay. I go silent. Yeah, exactly. I'm in the desert, I'm out of water, and here's the flare gun. <laughs> Please find me. Right. Please. You know, offhand, I can't, I don't, no, I don't think it has anything like that, but yeah. I imagine if it's going to be coming out on Apple, there's somebody's going to write something for Android sooner or later that will come out on it. Well, for anybody who's like, hey, find my iPhone, find my iPad, what's that mumbo jumbo about? You can see, I mean, I'm located here in Petaluma at our Twit studio, and all my devices are with me. By the way, I had to get a new iPhone yesterday. Oh, really? I went to the Apple store and I got myself a new iPhone because oh. I can't live without one. And so you never got it back. Then. Never got it back. Oh no. No. And you have no nobody's. Well, I didn't wait you? that long either. Right. But yeah, you what need you one right what away. you can do on a device is let's say I've lost my iPad because it'll work the exact same way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little bit a little bit harder to misplace your iPad, but hey, it wouldn't be the it first could time. Happen, yeah. So if you go ahead and say, all right, this is this device. Um, if you were to be looking for it, and this has actually happened to me before. I once um, left my iPad uh, in a, you know, like a messenger bag down mm -hmm. at uh, Taps, and then I couldn't find it later when I got home, and there it was sitting at Taps, so I knew it was there. So let's say you were, uh, you know, just, I don't know, I, it was misplaced. Right. I could run all of this from a phone or an iPad. I could play a sound that way. Um, it's giving me a sense of, oh, oh, it's under the couch, or that sort of thing. You can go into lost mode, which means, and I'm not going to turn it on because I'm not actually in lost mode right now, which means that if for some reason somebody else were to pick it up and kind of, you know, it's a lock screen and they see a lo the, the lock screen going on, I can write a message that says something like, this iPad is lost, please call me, my name's Sarah, here's the number. Right. Um, some, some sort of a message that they will see without giving them any access to the iPad if it, you know, if it, if it um, has a, a passcode, which it should. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, in the event of something really terrible happening, you could just go ahead and erase the whole thing. I said, cancel, dear iPad. <laughs> cancel, dear. All right, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, erase it, and that would be if, you know, you thought that it was stolen. There was no way that anybody's going to try to give it back to you, and you just wanted everything gone. Right. So it's just something, you know, my story didn't end that well, but it's, it's something to remember. Um, also to keep your batteries a lot more charged than definitely no i like the idea of the the sending out the sos but another uh program that i've used uh on my laptop not for the ipad but uh was prey and i looked it up and it looks like like, like prey or prey p-r-e-y okay yeah like, yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> and that was a program that i've used to um it'll not only find where your uh your device is but it will take a picture of like a snapshot if you say that device is lost, mm -hmm. so then you can see is somebody using it? Like, oh. is this has this been thievery or is it just sitting like on a table somewhere? Right, right. So, uh, and you can lock it down uh -huh. and you can erase it too. Yeah. Um, but I, I haven't tried that on the iPad, but it sounds like it's something similar to kind of what you've been describing, but with like the added feature being able to like, oh, somebody stole my iPad and that's the picture of them, so. Oh yeah, that'd be crazy. I, you know, it's. I've got my, you know, my phone has a passcode. Sure, if somebody wanted to steal it and like, 
reformat it and I don't yeah. know, sell for parts or whatever. They don't really care about that. There are ways to get around it. But for the most part, it's like, I guess I should wipe it at this point. I've moved yeah. on. Can I've you though, my... if the battery's dead now? I mean, as soon as it turns on, will it just activate yeah. the wipe? Yeah. yeah, you could. Okay. Yeah. Sad. Very sad. Well, yeah, anyway, really. now I've got my fourth uh, gold iPhone. <laughs> yeah, just keep getting new ones. Oh, man. Good times. It's, you, well, it's good research. Do you, you think know? it would have been taken <laughs> if it still had the broken screen on it? Uh, no. No. <laughs> it's like, no, everyone's I don't. That. Yeah, that's a, you know, Defense anybody watches mechanism. i5, you know that I've, I've had some really bad uh, iPhone 5S issues. I'm excited for the next gen. <laughs> so, Brian, I wanted to put you on the spot a tiny bit before oh we move on. I know that you said this is the iPad that you're sharing with your fiance, mm -hmm. and there are apps that you would like and she would like, and the, that's very common right. that people sharing an iPad in a home. Mm -hmm. So, what are what are yeah? I, I wanted to say what's on your home screen because that's sort of a good way to get to know somebody. Right. And you said, well, I don't really have much of a customized home screen, it's sort of just the stock apps. But what do you, when you use your iPad, where mm -hmm. do you go? Where, what's your go-to app, or do you have a few? Well, just like um, in my apartment, I have my man cave on the iPad, <laughs> where oh. I've made folders dedicated to the things that I'm interested in. And my, to preference, my, my fiance, she's tech savvy, but she's not like super into certain apps and stuff. And mostly she uses it for looking up recipes when, in the kitchen mm -hmm. or watching Netflix when we're doing stuff around the apartment. So a lot of the stuff is just default on the screen. And the only things I ever mess with are, you know, I put some games on here because I wanted to play those, but she never touches them. I think, now why oh, is Twitter print. in your games folder? <laughs> because this began as... <laughs> Again, it's unorganized, much like my man cave at home. Uh, this, is, so I have. It's not. It's. I pick this up and I have two folders and I just I go into them and I try not to mess with this too much. Like my Brian folder, I have the GoPro app, but then I also have Infinity Blade and Badland. And I think a lot of the time it's it's a. Um, a jerk reaction for me to go onto the iTunes store when I watch this show and I find out, oh, that that, that, that app is free now? Like, uh -huh. I'll just go on yeah. and then I'll just drag it and drop it into one of my folders so it doesn't, like, mess with her home screen. Uh, but, yeah, Twitter is in my games folder. Well, that's all right. I just, you know, Gmail again, is in there, Yeah, too. just, all, it's all a game to me. Instagram. Sure. It's this. These were mostly just folders I set aside so that she didn't have to worry about anything and when I got on it, I could just find the stuff I wanted. Um, it, it's interesting to see how the organization works, especially when you have somebody else, where it's like, yeah, Twitter and Gmail aren't technically games, but nothing's stopping you from putting them in that folder. And really, it's more of just Brian stuff. Right. Rather right. than this, game specifically. This was a way of me unobtrusively putting <laughs> things on here and getting I think you're going to have a very happy marriage. It seems like you're coming at this from a really right, the right place. Really, what it is is just do whatever you want to the home screen and just hide the stuff that you need where you can find it. So, so what's your favorite game? My favorite game on the iPad? Yeah. Because um, Leo and I, we, yeah, as, as anybody who watches this show knows, we have very different ideas of what is a fun exercise right. in a gaming app. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, so where do you fall? Do you like the, you know, the first-person shooters? Do you like the puzzles? Do you like the physics games? Um, in general, when it comes to touch screens, I don't like to play a lot of, like, first-person shooters or anything like that because I'm so used to using either a mouse and keyboard or having, like, an actual physical... Um, attachment with buttons and stuff. Yeah. So one of the games that I was first introduced and part of the reason why I wanted to get the iPad was uh, Osmosis was one of the games. I think Eileen was like the first person to show me this game. Oh yeah? And it's more of a exercise in relaxation for me. So I'll usually kick back on the couch with some like watching um, you know, House of Cards or something, and I'll also be playing around on the iPad with this game, because it's got... That's right. I was... I, you, yeah, now that I see it, I remember Osmosis. It's cool. And I'm... Well, okay, that wasn't so good. Maybe, right. Maybe I'll you try that again. Right. In the life farm. But basically, it's just more of a relaxation thing. Yeah. Um, for me, whereas if I really want to do, like, hardcore gaming, I don't know if that's what you'd really call it, like, play first-person shooters or something, I, I reserve that for my PC. Sure. And I'm more interested in, uh, you know, relaxing on the iPad. This is a, a I, I can see. Yeah, look, you're growing. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Your, your, your life forms are good. I don't actually remember, you know, it's funny, I, I, I remember playing this and thinking, ooh, this is fun. And I don't really remember the object of the game anymore. I guess we're looking at it. Yeah, you just, you absorb the other little life forms. It's actually very disturbing when you, you think about it closely because you're devouring other creatures. But, uh, you know, when you play this music with it, it's not too bad. <laughs> it does seem sort of meditative and therapeutic, especially if you're watching House of Cards. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> A political thriller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it somehow balances out the energy. You know, it's absolutely. good stuff. Osmosis. I haven't uh, I haven't looked at Osmosis in the App Store. I know it's not free. Let's I, I think I might most of the games that I have on here are the ones that I grabbed when they were on like a When they were limited time like type thing. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good reminder. Good reminder. If anyone's looking for something that's a lot of pressure and a lot of shooting, soothing music, I know Osmosis would be a good place to look. If you were to share your iPad with someone, how would you would you segregate, segregate like into little folders, or the would you idea just say, of Get sharing your own iPad. anything iOS with anyone is upsetting <laughs> not... to me? However, that's only because I. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's just because I don't <laughs> like sharing. I guess uh, I just never well, have. Let me just let me play with your iPad, sir. Mm. <laughs> I don't even like that idea. <laughs> no, I don't even want you to touch oh. it. But that's because I'm afraid you're going to ruin something. It's right. not like there's anything in there. Right. Well. I, I also, I mean, look, I mean, these, the, yeah. I've, I've cleaned up a lot of apps off of my iPad, and I still have so many apps because, wow. of course, we, you know, we just have to try out stuff, you know? There's three pages on this home screen right here. How many pages do you have over there? Mm, about 12. Okay, two, well, I mean, and for your job, you're always testing apps. It's so research. Yeah. It is, it is. But I, but I also have a layout that works for me. And what's weird is that on the iPad and the iPhone, and I know not everybody who has an iPad also has an iPhone, but for those who do, they don't look the same. I mean, my, right. my iPhone and my iPad are, they, they look differently on purpose. Um, not just because, of course, of the screen real estate, but there are certain things right. that I enjoy on my iPhone that and my iPad and vice versa. You know, for example, Flipboard, it doesn't really work on my iPhone, it's just not big enough. Flipboard right. on my iPad, that is what I read every night. What, you know, like the before I turn off the light and go to sleep, yeah. we, go, uh, we go straight to Flipboard. I love it on my iPad, but you guys are sick of me talking about Flipboard, you already know that. I love Flipboard, though. I do too, I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, quick reminder to everybody who might be watching us after the fact, and Sarah and Brian, although it would have been so fun to watch them live. Uh, we do record the show on Mondays, eh, somewhere between noon and 12.30-ish. Depending on traffic and everything. Depending on traffic and, and uh, we, uh, for anybody who watches the live schedule, we follow a triangulation, which is Leo talking to really, really smart, awesome people who have done awesome things uh, in technology, various facets. So um, sometimes uh, it'd be great to watch them first. Then we roll right into this show. Um, of course, though, if you do want to watch on demand or subscribe to the show or uh, keep up uh, on episodes that you might have missed, sometimes watch stuff out of order. Sometimes I get uh, emails from somebody who's like, I just saw episode 100. And I'm like, that was like so long ago. But OK, let's talk about it. Uh, that's fine, too. Just go to twit.tv slash IPT. That is our show. Ground zero. Two dots, Photoshop Mix, Run P were just three of the apps that Leo and I talked about last week. Uh, Brian, have you ever used Run P? That's the no. app that lets you know when to take a pee break during a movie so that you don't miss anything good. <laughs> were you not that here last be, week? I was not here last week. Oh, jeez, yeah. we missed you. Oh, well, I, I didn't even notice. Right. <laughs> you missed me a whole lot. I'm like, yeah, that's an yeah. actual app. That that would be really handy, especially for um, Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, Although I think with some of those movies, you just like go take a smoke break too while you're at it. Oh yeah. You're not gonna miss much. Go get a meal, have a sandwich, come back. It's like all right, <laughs> take I'm a fighting nap. the dragon now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. That's all I was waiting for. I did a lot of walking through the Shire. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about some uh, news that came out over the last week. Um, Apple has released. This is not really all that exciting, but I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, iOS 7.1.2, right. with some they're like little fixes, uh, some eye beacon improvements, uh, which is not anything that I'm. Really Really taking advantage of, but uh, there, I guess there was a, um, a bug with data transfer for some third-party accessories, uh, some security improvements. When I was at the Apple Store yesterday, actually, I couldn't um, I couldn't restore my data from iCloud until I upgraded to this uh, uh, the security update because. <laughs> 
the iPhone in the box was older than Makes sense. the newest version of iOS 7, right. which isn't even really going to be with us that much longer. I don't know. It's just funny how these things work. But yeah, uh, improves iBeacon connectivity and stability, uh, fixes a bug, as I mentioned, with data transfer for some third-party accessories. Code scanners were in there. Uh, corrected an issue with data protection class of mail attachments. Right. So not a fun, interesting update. It's not. It's Just not a, a sexy. It's not a sexy story. update. But but is there one? Is well, there a sexy yeah, update? I, is there a sexy update? <laughs> there probably is one out there. But you know, it's like. Even on Android, it's like, oh, is there an update? Like, I keep hearing about 4.4.3, which yeah. is, for Android, isn't, like, a huge deal. But I have the, the Moto X on mm -hmm. uh, Verizon. Yeah. And it's like, I keep seeing news stories about all these other Android phones getting updates. And I so I'll go into my settings, and I will refresh. And it's, it's like, it's not going to really change that much. I'm not going to notice many, any of the differences, but I'm still like, is that update out? I want to see that update. <laughs> It's not now, sexy. But, but you have to push for the update. It won't just say, it, I'm here. It will. But there have been times where if I check it enough, it like, it's like, oh, there it is. OK, it popped yeah. up. But because I'm on uh, Verizon, it takes a while. So, but, but with Apple devices, I imagine they just, it's like right away, right? Does, does it depend not on what Not necessarily. I mean, yeah, with iOS 7, the update will sort of, it'll, you know, you'll get a little notification. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if uh, there was an update for my iPad, you'd see the little, the little one or whatever, you know, yeah. then you go into your settings and then you go to software update, which is, where is it? Uh, uh, I guess it's in general. Yeah, software update. Yeah. Um, I don't need one right now, but if I did, yeah, it's, it's pretty good uh -huh. about letting you know. It's I don't like, know why I'm on Twitcast right now. You never know. What this is. <laughs> oh, actually, there is one. Duh! It's this one <laughs> that we just talked about. Uh, <laughs> See? That I hadn't updated That's yet. That's why you check. This That's why I not, do it on my phone. This is not something I should be doing right now. No. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Let's wait till after. But the show. I don't know. I see that little red tick mark on the, this iPad all the time because yeah. Cherylis is my fiance's name. Um, she is terrible about updating anything, and so I'll sneak yeah. up, sneak on here, and be like, oh, uh, there's a little red box. Like it's we like an itch that I need to scratch. Like make sure everything's updated. Well, so. After I just got finished saying, oh, I'd have a little notification, obviously the software update has has trumped that whole story, although it is brand new, so maybe that it'll just yeah. take a while. But no, there are definitely times where I have to, uh, it's I'm sort of fetching that software data. Mm -hmm. iOS is pretty good about it, but I don't think it's, you know, it's not like coming to everyone's devices at the exact same second. Right, right, okay. What Apple has also done is announced an update for iTunes U. Have you ever uh, played around with iTunes U at all? It's sort of a, a way to almost take uh, virtual classes through, right. through a variety of uh, courses. And it's really cool um, and really underutilized, uh, even by me, even though I think it's cool. Uh, Leo and I have talked um, about all sorts of things that you can learn through iTunes U. And I've got a bunch of weird stuff in here just because <laughs> I subscribe to things just to see kind of what it's all about. Uh, but if you were to go back to uh, the catalog of iTunes U in the library, I mean, there's so many different kinds of courses that you can get into. It's, it's a bit like, what's the term for when you sit in on a class at college, but you're not actually enrolled in the class? Like, oh, is like it you're just not, sitting in? I think it's just sitting in, yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. what I feel like this is. It's, it's something that obviously you can use for yourself, but you can almost just be a fly on the wall a little bit. Um, I don't, uh, speeches and books, ooh, yeah. See, I haven't been in here in a while, so this is kind of exciting. But uh, what uh, Apple has done is they have updated iTunes U um, to uh, give you the opportunity to create courses via an iPad. Before right. the iPad was just the, you know, the iTunes U uh, app is basically a consumption app, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's more uh, of, of putting together actual courses that could be part of this that could happen natively on the iPad, um, a little bit more uh, variety for uh, discussion areas. British Invasion. OK, so let's go into the Ohio State University, British Invasion. See, that's pretty fun. Impact of British popular music. OK, this is just totally up my alley. Nice. Of course, I didn't go to Ohio State, but why not? Actually, I did take some courses like this when I was in high school or in college 100 million years ago. But yeah, so <laughs> look at this. So now we're in here. 
and you get a little synopsis of what the course is all about. Um, you get a little bit more information on Timothy Gerber, who's the professor. Um, I have the option to email him and just kind of be like, hey, man, that's awesome. Outline says, gives you an idea of what, what you've got going on. Um, and then uh, uh, the posts area is where uh, th this is sort of the student discussion area that I was talking about that's oh, wow. new. Yeah, that gives you uh, a lot more information about... Um, I don't know, I, how the course was put together, basically, right. and so on. So, I, you know, understanding British culture. Well, we're not there yet, I guess. Uh, <laughs> that, that part of the, uh, the I, I have subscribed to the class, but it, the, the, the materials haven't rolled out yet. Right, right. So. I, most, I hadn't played with this a lot. Um, I was aware of it, but mostly it just makes me upset that I wasn't, that I'm as old as I am now, because I wish I had these when I was in school. I know. Um, and like yeah, I was just flipping through, and I could totally see this becoming. Oh, I don't know why. You got you're going three X or something. <laughs> um, but this is the Academy of Science uh, uh -huh. from San Francisco, and they have uh, a bunch of different courses on a variety of things. And this is one of their tech ones, and this is the history of flight. And I could see this becoming basically what the Discovery Channel and the History Channel was for me growing up, where I would just put something on and just listen to it and learn like a few things off and on, instead of um, Pawn Stars, I think it was the last thing I saw on there, or they have a bunch of weird stuff. But you can like really drill down into things that you're interested in, and one of my goals for this year is to teach myself how to code uh -huh. more, because uh, I'm a I TD on the Coding 101 show with Shannon and Padre, and it's super interesting. But sometimes I need to like go back and you know check some other references to learn other things. And there's you know a ton of stuff on here about programming or whatever else that you're interested. History lessons, yeah. Like you were saying, the British uh, music stuff. I saw stuff on uh, Thomas Jefferson's. Um, what was it where he lived? Uh, uh, I should know this. I've been there. Starts with an M. I just uh, saw it, but now the, the Montecito, iPad's freezing. Montecito, Montecito. Monticello. Monticello. Is that it? Jeez. <laughs> or am I just thinking of a, the no, fifth that's right. Ninja Turtle? Monticello. 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 Is it? That's not the fifth Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Donatello, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Monticello. I'm kidding. I'm oh, still... okay. I was like, <laughs> no, really? There, there's only four Ninja Turtles okay. <laughs> in an awful movie. Is, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's, like the, you know, it's like the fifth Beatle. Yeah, it's all, it's all, this is all related. But yeah, uh, I, I know that a lot of teachers, like here in Petaluma, um, they're really trying to embrace like a lot of the tech stuff. Mm. And I could see this helping out um, one of the teachers that I was actually just talking to, where she would build the course, the students could download and look at where all the course points were and stuff. And instead of having to focus on like a daily routine yeah. of like, okay, this is what we're writing on the board. This is what you all need to know. Students could like see it all on their iPad and then there'd be more of an interaction between the teacher and the student. So like, it's like, oh, you didn't get that part? Like I can talk to you about it because you already like had the access to it on your iPad. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of students, uh, is we some time ago, gosh, I mean, it was last year at some point, uh, we talked on the show about how the Los Angeles uh, Unified School District, which is, uh, it's, I think it's the second largest school district in the nation just behind New York, um, had decided that um, they were going to spend a bunch of money, uh, invest in iPads so that all the students conceivably, not right away would all have an iPad, basically. Right. And it sounds like, and this is a story in the LA Times from this morning, it sounds like that project, while well-intentioned, right. was a little um, short-sighted. It was One, kind of a knee-jerk reaction to a getting little bit, like, yeah. tech into schools. Yeah, or it sounds like, um, and the, you know, it's an interesting article, and I'll just we'll just cover a couple of points, that um, what, what uh, teachers realized is that you know, there is no one device that's perfect for every kid, just like no kid learns exactly the same. Right. Sometimes, you know, if somebody's better at math or they want to go faster or they're bad at tests or, right. you know, it's just, that's just the way that humans are. Yeah. And so, you know, as, as we talk about the devices that you like and the devices that I like, and, and it, the same goes for school. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, depending on the curriculum, it's like, why... A laptop makes more sense for a student that needs to type a lot, like mm -hmm. write up a bunch of papers and mm -hmm. stuff. Or, because uh, I was reading the article and it said, like, 
you know, Surface, the Surface tablets are great and it integrates with a lot of Microsoft stuff and everything. But one of the concerns was that the keyboard attachment would get lost or broken. And it's like, I still break stuff all the time. And I was even worse when I was in high school. Like, I was always spilling stuff on my books. <laughs> You know, like you get soda all over your books and everything. And yeah, so I mean, you're a kid. If the school kids district are messy. Is, yeah, if the school district is paying all this money for tablets and stuff like that, like and kids right. are just like getting crumbs in them and stuff. And well, not only that, but apparently because kids are smart when it comes to getting around too. rules, right. uh, it sounds like students pretty quickly uh, figured out how to get rid of security filters that had been added to the iPads before yeah. they reached uh, the school district. And then it's, and it apparently is, it gets even weirder that senior staff uh, incorrectly characterized the terms of the contract. So the district was supposed to own the, basically the entirety of what's on all of these iPads. Mm -hmm. But it was some sort of a contract that was a three year license and the, none of the material, it's legally, it sounds like they rushed this whole thing. Right. They were like, $40 million, take it! Yeah, and kids iPads were able for everybody. to get whatever apps they were on it. Uh, exactly. Uh, they wanted onto yeah. it and stuff. So it sounds like they are going to not scrap the idea, and it's not as if iPads aren't helpful, but uh, they will be using a new approach that's more of a, let's choose from six different um, computers for certain students. Anyway. Right, right. So you've got all sorts of options based on the kind of student you are and the kind of class you're taking and so on. Well, I, lo I love these ideas of getting the tech into the school, but then not, like, a lot of the administration doesn't have an idea of how it all works. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, when I was in high school um, with Alex Gumpel, like, we were always finding ways around, like, the firewall. Like they Alex had... Gumpel, who also works here. Right, right. Who, well, he's not here today. We're, we're so reporting it, but he sits over him. there when he is. He's yeah. there in the dark. You guys went to high school together. That's, gosh, you guys are really... We're pals. You really know each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was like every time they tried to come up with some way of stopping us to do something, it mm -hmm. was just more incentive for us to try and get around it. Of course. Yeah. So, and I'm I'm pretty sure kids haven't changed. Like, or <laughs> even if you're not trying to do anything bad, it's no. just that you know there, there's that there's mm -hmm. that feeling that if you can get around some of these rules, would yeah. it be fun to be able to have done so? Mm -hmm. So, LA Unified School District, um, let us know how you're doing, and hopefully the tech is helping the kids. Um, I think this most of most of the issues here were applied to yeah. about the right twenty-seven idea. high schools in the district. It totally yeah. is. Uh, especially, hey, if you are in a situation where um, you don't have an iPad at home or mm -hmm. maybe your family is sharing one or two or what, you know, it's to be able to have something that, that actually can be used for schoolwork. We've talked a million times about how many really, really helpful apps um, are on the iPad, available for the iPad that are 100% uh, great for kids. iTunes U, if you don't, if you, if you haven't checked out that app, because um, it's really more of an entire library of stuff you really should. All right, let's go into some of our viewer feedback of the week. Um, first one comes from William, who says, I was watching your last episode, and it got me thinking about the continuity code that was found for the Apple TV. So you weren't here last week. No. Uh, so uh, just a brief uh, 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 backstory is that there there is some code that's found in iOS 8 that makes it seem like... Um, there would be the possibility of sharing um, an app that would be running on, you know, one of your iDevices with the Apple TV hmm. in, a, in, a, in a way where it's like, oh, I could, like, start an email on my iPad and then open up the app on my Apple TV, perhaps. Yeah, this is a, this is a story from last week. Um, and, and so Leo and I were kind of like, that's sort of interesting, but, like, email on the Apple TV and then you got to yeah. have a cute, like, that... It kind of doesn't make sense, right? right? So he said, well, what about phone calls? And I said, but there's no camera. I, I mean, then you'd have to have a TV with a camera, and that's not really part of the Apple thing. So anyway, that said, William says, Leo mentioned that the Apple TV receiving a call or at least showing who was calling on the TV might be interesting, but you had mentioned what would be the point if you can't talk from your TV? William says, what if Apple was producing a 4K TV with a built-in eyesight camera and an Apple TV? That way, you could take a FaceTime call from your iPad or iPhone and then just push it to the TV. Just a thought. Love the show. 
So this is William kind of bringing back that like Apple television that we I was gonna say, keep hearing that, about that never happens. That rumor has been going around for years. For years. Yeah. But do you think, I mean, what, would, you, would that be something that you'd be interested in? Do you think finally we may see something like this or is the software finally uh, um, able to handle something like that? Yes and no. Like, I can't see myself wanting to put videos of while I'm having a phone call on, onto the TV. Yeah. Um, but I do, the integration I do with my, I like having my, when I get home, I put my cell phone on my desk and I just leave it there. Yeah. And then if I get a phone call or something, I get a notification on like my laptop mm -hmm. and I can text from my laptop and yeah. stuff. So I like the idea of, the integration with the TV where you don't have to have your device next to you if you're if you're watching TV it just shows like a notification or something like uh -huh. that and then it's like uh, yeah okay answer that call and then I could see that being appealing but um, I don't do a lot of face do you FaceTime a lot or do you do video never. call never other I, I outside don't, of Twit I've I don't like talking to people in general that's what I was gonna say like I would rather someone just text me yeah and not have to talk to them <laughs> that yes. sounds awful but it's like mom I don't look can you just text me what you want mom like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easier it's it's less disruptive especially if you're watching right. something uh, watching it, a movie or whatever I mean the big question is is will Apple ever make a TV and then it's it's <sighs> Yeah, it's always been interesting to me because it's like the whole TV rumor sort of spiraled out of control, but it came from something. Right. And then it just sort of became this thing that Apple was working on. And at this point, it's like we've pretty much laid that one to rest. We've moved on to wearables at this point. Like, when's right. the iWatch coming? Apple TV? Nah, nah, nah. Uh, but, but the Apple TV in its current incarnation, I don't know, it's a little long in the tooth, I guess. They do keep adding apps. Right. There are hints that there, there, there at least is some you know, the, there, there is some development going on that would help uh, the Apple TV going forward. So in that vein, no, I don't really see a 4K TV coming from Apple this year with an eyesight camera, but I don't know that many people who would even want to ever see a video call on their, t I, you know, I, I know it happens, but it seems yeah. more still conference room kind of thing. Not, yeah. You know, I, I don't know how many families are actually doing that. Maybe we're just being completely naive, and a lot of you would like that, but. I, I guess. Don't, I, don't I don't know. I don't want anyone to see me. When I do a game. Skype call or something, a majority of the Skype calls I do are here. You know, sure. But uh, if I do do a Skype call, it's usually like I go into a different room so I'm not bothering everyone yeah. like, with my phone call and then having it come over my stereo system and stuff. I don't know. I just uh, I think there's better ways that Apple could do integrate stuff like that without having to make a whole TV out of it and stuff. Yeah. I'd, li I'd like there to be a big old beautiful TV <laughs> that has an Apple TV built in and it just, you know, it, it, yeah, I'd buy it. Well, yeah, I mean, those but iMacs I don't are need one. beautiful. Sure. Like the giant 27-inch iMacs and stuff that they have. Yeah. Like that, that was a TV to me not that long ago. Like sure. Like the size of a TV. So, yeah, yeah. But the functionality of a computer. But. It's a lot of, it's perfectly big enough for a lot of people. All right, let's move on to some more feedback. Uh, this one comes from Andrew. He says, I enjoy watching the show each week. Thank oh. you. An observation on your discussion about the notification center, because Leo, again, this was, this was last week, I think, and we both were like, why is it that push notifications have to be so confusing? The mm. settings for the notification center are just weird, you know? It's like, do you want it on your lock screen? Do you want it to be in the notification center? Do you actually want it to be front and center? <laughs> and, 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 and everything in between. And I was like, I feel like sometimes I say, no app that I just downloaded, don't send me notifications. And, it and then still I does get it? them. Uh, it's like, why? That's frustrating. Yeah, like, how, how does that happen? What, what's going on? So uh, Andrew says, you mentioned how you thought that you've set an app for no notifications, but you're still getting them. However, I noticed the same annoyance. I believe when some apps are updated, the notification <sighs> settings are conveniently reset. Oh, that's More sneaky. often, apps are added back into the notification center, but I've also noticed lock screen, alert sound, and badge settings adjusted as well. So, I, Andrew, I, I don't know. I mean, that can't be, that, that can't be right. If, that, if that's happening, that is totally against the terms of service because an app can't just say, oh, well, that was the last version that you, right. that you didn't the want the notifications version, So we're for. resetting all the, the, the defaults. Yeah, so that's... 
That mm. almost sounds like, honestly, it's like if that's actually happening and you're noticing that the settings are changing, yeah. that's more of a bug than an app having that kind of power. The only time I've noticed that is when I completely uninstall a program and sure. then reinstall it. And that makes sense, but like an update, yeah. then changing the settings yeah. like that? Yeah. I wonder if that's what Andrew means, is that he, he may have re-downloaded an app. And then the settings weren't uh -huh. saved, which makes sense. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Even then, though, your if it's coming from iCloud, mm. it should bring everything with you. I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I literally had to just reformat this phone, you know, 24 hours ago, and for the most part, yeah, my notification settings are intact. But then again, I was destroying from iCloud backup, so it's probably it probably depends on where uh, where your data is even coming from. Well, let me ask you, I'm not as integrated in the, into the iPad as you are. Do you get <laughs> Do you get all your notifications through here? Do you or a lot of them like text messages or calls and stuff like text that? Text messages definitely. Calls no cuz it's you know, it's it's uh if you, you can only call me on my phone, anything. yeah, this is it, it has a phone number associated with it because I have a data plan, but mm -hmm. it's not like I can use it as a phone. But yes, text, definitely. If somebody texts me, I get it here, here, and here. <laughs> and my computer at home, because uh, you can't miss texts. Things like Facebook Messenger, which I use pretty often, but pretty much like the communication stuff, the messenger right. stuff, definitely. Okay. Uh, for everything else, very little. Right now, I have notifications for the World Cup games through my FIFA app because mm -hmm. I like that. If I happen to and miss just, one, it's not like bombarding you with no. notifications or anything. In fact, for the most part, I always say no. Send me no notifications right. because they just end up being annoying, and I don't like them. Well, was it? I, it was one of the apps I was just playing with. Um, said it was going to do push notifications. I was like, oh, yep, Shirley's is not going to like that. Nope, no push, no push. Right, yeah. right. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I will remember to continue to say no push. Yeah, in general, because you can always go back and change it. Yeah. Then again, yeah, you know, I, I know that um, some people say, well, I, I want to know what they're going to notify me about. And if mm. then I don't like it, then I can go in and change it. And that's, that's true, too. That's a good strategy. I just feel like I'm just, then again, I have way too many apps, so I have to be. <laughs> yeah, you, know? you do have a I'm lot of apps. I <laughs> try to keep things uh, in check. <laughs> Torben, or Thorben, I think it's probably pronounced Torben, from Germany, on the same, uh, on the same subject. He sent us a really interesting uh, a, a set of reasons that he thinks maybe notification is confusing some of us. He says, there's a difference between local and remote push notifications. Local ones can't be turned off on iOS 7. iOS 8, which is coming in the fall, will fix this and put up the yes, no sheet for all apps using any sort of notification. Unfortunately, a lot of apps, especially games, use local notifications and can't be turned off right now. That's sort of a loophole. So to do a live and not pre-scheduled notification via a local notification to the user, the app has to keep running in the background and schedule a local notification, which is against Apple's guidelines. <laughs> And uh, real remote notifications, as Apple intended them, end up getting delivered while your phone or iPad connects to the network, uh, saving a lot of energy. So he says, in conclusion, since iOS 7 apps get woken up in the background, mm -hmm. they can achieve the same thing without all the battery hog. Does that make sense to you? I just, the reading that whole paragraph, I was just thinking, hey, I heard you like notifications. Here's notifications for your notifications, like on a local local basis. But I guess, yeah, it makes sense. But I guess that loophole is also kind of silly where they, the apps are able to do that locally. That's, I mean, and that's the thing is that I, you know, I, I when I got this email in our iPad today at twit.tv email inbox, I was like, I had to read it a couple times, and I'm like, okay, I, I understand what he's talking about, but as a user, the fact that there are loopholes that you can, uh, you know, you get around, like, figure out how to push a notification to somebody because there's local and remote, like, no user cares about that. No, well, no. some user probably cares about that, but most users, especially iPad users, yeah. like, we don't, that doesn't, none of that means anything. Right. So it's just confusing. Exactly. Why do I, why, why is this just... iPad notifying me, or why isn't it? <laughs> I was feeling a little overwhelmed just, just thinking about it, yeah. And I don't even, <laughs> I was like, I don't even use this every day, so. Well, you better start. If you're going to oh, keep TDing the show, Brian, you better 
You better I, jump in, feet first, head first. Well, I mean, I love watching the show, <laughs> and it's entertaining. You don't even need an iPad to enjoy it. Well, but, that, so. that, I, I, I like hearing that. No, we do hear that. That's fun. I, I love the fact that some of you say, I don't even have an iPad, I just like the show, so that's great too. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, uh, our last uh, email of the week comes from Karen, who says, I'd be interested in what your opinions are on the cable channel apps. She says, do you think we're at a point when we can cut the cord? Also, since Aereo didn't win their Supreme Court case, how will that affect cutting the cord? Okay, so I think... What Karen is saying is, are there? Do you feel like there are enough ways to be able to watch television, right, via the iPad? And that what are the repercussions going to be from this? The Aereo case, yeah. Well, I know now, that you you don't have cable, right? You just do I everything do not. stream, so right. like Hulu, HBO Go, HBO. That's well, how you get your H Game of Thrones. HBO Go is not available to me uh -huh. because I don't pay for HBO. Makes sense. Okay. However, now that you can airplay from a variety of iPads to an Apple TV, it becomes a lot easier. Like somebody can come over, I can go over to their house. You know, it's there's you know, right. it's, Game of Thrones is fun to watch uh, with a group anyway. So no, but Hulu, yes, mm -hmm. Netflix, don't need a cable subscription for. Here's an interesting thing. So I was under the impression, and if we go ahead and oh, it's the Watch ESPN. So I've been hanging out on the Watch ESPN app a ton because I like to look at little highlights and this and that, but they also have live uh, um, World Cup games, which of course, is, that's what's going on right now. Uh, Germ Germany versus Algeria, uh, it is live at the time of us recording this. But I, I love this app, and what's nice about it is that if you do pay for something, uh, a cable, um, package where you get ESPN mm -hmm. you're just be uh, you're able to put in your credentials and get going now I was under the impression so I'm you know signed in this is just like a little test account you go ahead and log out and you can sign in with a variety of different um, cable providers depending on where you live in in the US anyway a friend of mine Ron Richards who is one of the co-hosts of all about Android mm -hmm. says well you know if, if you just pay for like Comcast internet so if you're a cord cutter but you still have internet, right. you just add, you just log in that way, and Through you can the Xfinity stuff. I think is what they call it. I guess so. That's what I've had to do. Yeah. It's but like... so, so, but I was like, that can't be right. And he goes, No, 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 it's right. I mean, I'm not lying to you. That's how yeah. I'm watching uh, ESPN, and I'm able to um, send that to my Apple TV, and all I'm paying for is internet. Well, that's all I'm paying for too. Huh. So there might be, and that's Comcast specifically, and that's in San Francisco. But if any of you are like, ah, it sucks, I only pay for internet but not cable, and that's why I can't use some of these apps, give it a try. Yeah. Because depending on your level, you might be able to get yourself in there. Well, there's only, there's like two reasons why there's still a physical box uh, for cable in my house. Otherwise, I would just purely be doing Netflix, Hulu, and everything else. And that is the DVR function which is mm -hmm. just saving certain things that come on TV that I typically wouldn't be able to save. And then sports, like watching right. the Giants and stuff. Sure. Now, were you able to do that using the over-and-air antenna? Is that how you If watch? it's on a network station, I am. Right. Now, I, can't, I don't get ESPN over the air, right. for example, but I get, you know, Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS. Okay. That's, like, the only reason I really have that. But this story still makes me so angry. Um, because this this also falls into the sling box stuff. Uh -huh. like it's you're you're paying for the cable. It's your stuff. It's just can you watch it on your mobile device when right. you want to watch it? Yeah. And it's also this was case was leveraged for Fox to go after Dish. Uh huh. And did that like the whole Dish Hopper thing is where you can watch. That, yeah, stuff. that's another legal battle that they're not done with yet, uh, which is another. That's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, I mean, I think what Karen is, Karen is basically like, are we ready yet? Are we ready to <laughs> cut the cord? Karen, I can tell you that I was ready. You're so a, close. A couple of years ago. Yeah. It's not perfect though. Like you no. mentioned, um, I don't, I can get a Giants game um, that is uh, airing on Fox, mm -hmm. but I can't watch it on TBS. And sometimes that's where it ends up. Yeah. Or, is that right? Some of the Giants games are on one of those uh, c cable networks that I don't get. Um, you know, ESPN, it sounds like, and I'm, I'm looking at our uh, chat room and some of you are saying, yeah, that works, Sarah, that, that whole thing about paying for internet and other people are saying, no, it doesn't work. Uh, some sort of like package, a premium mm -hmm. channel thing. But 
there is something, I mean, it is really magical to be like, oh, there's a soccer game on. Let me just pull it up on my iPad. Do you have an Apple TV? Cool. Okay, now we'll just watch it on the big screen. Oh, yeah. When it works, it works really great. It's awesome. But I think it really depends on just the kind of content you want to watch. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with my Hulu Plus, but I also watch a lot of terrible, <laughs> terrible television. <laughs> so do I. So there you but go. <laughs> this is going to be a struggle for a long time mm. because we have the Comcast and the, just the monopolies that they have with everything. Yeah. And so it's going to be a struggle. Um, it's always going to be a compromise. But fortunately, you know, I'm, I'm happy with Netflix. I could probably just do Netflix. But and just... And just watch your series and just watch my movies series and, and mm -hmm. get everything out. And yeah. just if I miss stuff, I miss stuff. Like I won't be as up to date on yeah. things. But I'm so done paying cable a cable bill. I haven't missed it. I honestly haven't. I, and again, it's it, it depends on what's important to you as far as watching. And Karen, I have no idea what your television habits are like. So, mm -hmm. but I don't think I I, I don't think it's. It has uh, diminished my happiness one bit. And, and probably what ends up happening is I just watch less TV. And that I used to watch too much TV. Right. So I, I, end, I <laughs> kind of end up like, sometimes like, the hours will go by and I'm like, I didn't watch, any, like my TV never turned on. Right. I've just been happy with my iPad it's, on it's my couch. One of those first world problems. Right. It's like, ah, oh, it's so difficult to watch what I want to watch when I want to watch it. So I'm going to watch less TV. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Woo hoo. I, know. I guess I'll, so I'll hard. hang out on iTunes U a little bit longer and yeah. finish my science. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. No, the, the, it really is um, the Hulu Plus app, um, which you know I, that's you, obviously you have to pay for Hulu Plus, but the app on the iPad is awesome. The Netflix app works fine. Right. Um, and and yeah. Um, uh, networks like uh, ABC are now experimenting with providing some uh, live programming that uh, goes over the iPad. I mean, it's, it's, it, everyone, we are sort of like, the networks are trying to figure it out. Like, right. okay, these things aren't going anywhere, so how do we benefit from it? And they want to hold on to it as tight as they can they until they figure on. out what they want to do. But really, it just, it seems to come down to, Give people what they want to watch when they want to watch it. Yeah. And do it in a way that is legal. Sure. Because uh, I think the best publicity that HBO has ever had is like the pirating of Game of Thrones. Sure. And it's like the most pirated thing. Mm -hmm. But then I will. I got an HBO subscription because I just wanted to watch. So it. So did my mom. Yeah. She was like, I can't. I, yeah. can't, I can't be out of the loop on this, and that's what my choice is. Because so people were talking we're about it all the time. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So uh, there's that too. There's that too. Karen, let us know um, what you're watching. I'm, mm -hmm. Now I'm just curious that's what it comes about down your television to. habits. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. just kind of like it depends. It depends on what you want to watch. Um, I would say, in in many cases, the iPad is um, it's the sort of one or the other for me. Mm -hmm. It's not. Oh, I'm just going to watch all my TV on the iPad, but it can be very helpful. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cord cutting is, uh, it's for some people and not others, but I think most of us can agree that um, a lot of those cable packages are just too darn expensive. Right. Well, you know what? We make it easy here at Twit, so you can watch all our stuff without having to worry about that. That's correct. <laughs> that's correct. Karen, that's what you do. Cut the cord and, and just do more. a lot of uh, Twit shows subscribing, and you can watch on your iPad, and it's good stuff. Um, we do love hearing from all of you, Karen and Andrew and... and Torben and That's a cool name. William. It is a cool name. I actually know another Torben. He's British. Uh, but that, uh, I don't think it's the same person. Uh, we love hearing from you. You can write us at iPad today at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail at 757 504 IPAD. You can send us a video. You can tweet at us. You can talk to us however you like. Uh, but we love your feedback and we love. Um, you helping us put together our show each week. Well, Brian, mm -hmm. this would usually be the time where Leo goes on and on about something or something else, and I sort of like, yeah, in the guys... background, try to slyly put on my app cap, but Leo's not here, so we're just right. gonna do things we're a little different gonna, today. We're gonna wing it. I'm just it. gonna go ahead and put my hat on right in front of y'all. You guys do this every week? What? What show have I been TDing? The Caps. I don't, I don't... Oh, would you like to know what, what this is all about? I don't actually understand this. This is supposed to go uh, it's under not a my... Chin strap well, it's or... just... <laughs> no. For somebody who has a really small face. Well, it's definitely not Leo's. It's then. not Leo. Oh. That's fine. Yay. That'll work. There All you right. go. Yay. Just go ahead and. <laughs> there we go. Looks yeah, natural. No, this looks really good. I yeah. like it too. This is the part of the show 
Brian, Brian knows the part of the show that I we're do. doing, but it's the Cap Awards, so we put on hats, a couple cool hats. That's very nice. I don't know. Is this going to be controversial? Oh, if be I, oh is wait. it is the, is it Android-ish? Is that what's happening? <laughs> Maybe. That's okay. You are you've got your Android phone here. Leo has an Android phone for how still. much longer? Who knows? But I think um, we like to call ourselves equal uh, OS. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah upper, opportunity employers of sure. OSs. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're cool with everything. Yeah. Very nice hat. And why do we wear hats? Because it just makes life more fun. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about sports earlier. And I am like, I am really deep into World Cup right now. Oh, yeah, you were explaining it to me in the kitchen. And I was kind of like yeah. glazing over yeah. with all the information. I was at the gym this morning watching the France game, France won. And you know, kind of next to this other girl. And she's looking at me like... <sighs> Because I'm getting, and I'm making these weird noises, and I'm on the treadmill. It's just like, I knew I was being weird, but I just can't help myself. I'm really excited about it's it. It's making me excited seeing, seeing the passion that you have for the soccer. Well, I'm so happy to hear that, Brian, because the, the, the sad truth of this is the World Cup will be over on July 13th, and then I have to wait four more years. So I got to <sighs> love rough. it while I can. But there are so many other sports in the world to love. And I just like sports in general. I just like, I like to root for teams and get to know the players. And I just think the whole thing is fun. There's only one other sport I can think of where someone got bit and it made as much news as it did in soccer. What? Which were, was it like somebody bit someone in soccer? And I, I always think of Mike Tyson when he bit someone's ear. Evander off. Holyfield, or, yeah, right? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. That's the yeah. only other biting incident I know about. You didn't hear about That's what, all I've seen on Reddit. Oh, no, is the, like, the, the Uruguay guy. Yeah, yeah, and soccer bit someone. Yeah, and and it was not the first time. Yeah, he's it's a biter. It's the same guy. Yeah, he right. bites. And Which uh, is like, can't you just not not bite people? Like, are you? What are is we going back to third grade? Right. Or maybe kindergarten. It's just like when do people stop biting people? I, some <laughs> kids never started. Thank goodness. Right. I don't. I hope um, I never bit anybody. I don't think but so. But yeah, like stuff like that because it's becoming so much more popular, and you talk about it all the time. It's like, well. Somebody bit somebody. I want to know about this now. So, <laughs> so show me. I'm your like, app. I'm like the mastery of, of the, the, you know, the, the it's like a dance out on the field. No, Brian's like, no. people are biting people, I'll man. Just, I should intense. get on this soccer train, football. I know. Anyway, there's a new app called 120 Sports. Cool. And it's not all about soccer. Um, in fact, if you're like a soccer hater then maybe this is still the app for you. Ooh, let me make sure that I'm, my hat's not on the way here. Uh, because it's all about just uh, sports news. So for example, I've been watching so much World Cup that I, uh, I caught a glimpse of this on the ESPN app that Jason Kidd um, may uh, no longer be the head coach of the Nets. And I sort of follow Jason Kidd because he used to play for the Warriors when he was really young, and that's sort of our local team. Anyway, so there, uh, you go ahead and we're looking at an ad right now um, that's, that's before the, um, before the content, but this is a uh, little conversation about the fact that this happened. All right, so you go ahead and say, all right, well, this is um, a video that has basically been pulled from, I don't actually know who these guys are, maybe maybe somebody else does, um, I like his shirt. But then you just go like, okay, well, all right, that's a video, but like maybe I just want a synopsis. It also pulled a little synopsis from Yahoo Sports, um, which a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, I like Yahoo Sports, but it's all within this app, 120 Sports. So you get all of this sort of like, oh, okay, there are people tweeting about this, so it can pull keywords. Um, and that is just one particular, God, he looks so much older. That's one particular story that has to do uh, with the, you know, the world of sports. Um, if you are interested in um, a baseball or Kentucky, that probably is something that's car related. Huh. I don't really know much about my cars. Right. Um, and that sort of thing. It's, it's just a, it's a curated bunch of stories that are about the world of sports. So now the biting incident, a couple days old at this point, so it's right. sort of been pushed. It's been, yeah, it's been pushed away. down. But this would be the place where I'd say, "Ooh, something yeah. just happened. Let's find out about it over at 120 Sports." Or something you might not have known about. You could find out, like that Kentucky thing. Now I'm interested because I saw all the the confetti in the background. And he stuff. looks happy, like, right? Is that, that's probably NASCAR. He, or he owned Kentucky. Brad Keselowski injures himself celebrating. Oh yeah, he's oh. definitely a NASCAR guy. Well, that, how did he do that? That's always embarrassing. Well, totally. But let's find out what happened. Right. And then this What'd is how do? I got started. Oh, he cut on his NASCAR. hand on a champagne bottle. Now, that's <laughs> an ultimate first first world problem right Ouch. there. Yeah. How I hurt myself. 
with my champagne. <laughs> I when... celebrated so hard Jeez, that I he really did hurt himself, Ooh, poor guy. Man. Yeah. So this is you know that what's nice about the sports stuff for me is that as much as I like sports, there's <laughs> there's always a ton of stuff I don't know anything about. Uh, car racing is one of them. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that they go around, but I like don't really know. Just left hand turns. At least as far as NASCAR goes. Right. It's like roller skating. You, then you'd like flip it and everyone's like, we don't know how to do it this way. Uh, I can appreciate it. I'm just not really into it. Yeah. So you can see what's trending. Um, uh, Suarez, I believe, is that's your man, right? Luis Suarez, uh, who uh, apparently, yeah, he's oh, been suspended. The biter? So there you go. Yeah, the biter. Yeah. More information about him. If maybe you're listening to Brian and I and being like, but somebody bit somebody? What the heck is going on yeah. here? Uh, you can get more information about that. So I find that there are people who are just never going to be interested in a variety of sports. Maybe some people hate all sports. Some people just like certain sports, whatever. Yeah. I like to feel like I have a basic knowledge in general of um, not just what's happening in sports, but also there's that there's that um, cultural aspect of it. And yeah. you said, for example, on Reddit, which of course is uh, a, uh, a site that we're going to um, uh, launch a show here on Twit uh, very soon with Chad Johnson and myself called cool Reddit show. Up. It's gonna be really fun. Yeah, we've done quite a few betas if you haven't seen those. And, and but, but you said, you know, you're seeing all this sports related stuff. So it kind of turns into this like popular culture thing too. Yeah, it is. Uh, well. The, the whole reason I heard about the biting thing is, mm -hmm. you know, the the Gordon Ramsay meme where he says, like, mean things to people. The, the guy who yells I, at people in the I kitchen. I know who he is, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a meme where it's like, um, Suarez, is that the guy who bit someone? Yes. It was his name, and he's like, not even he would eat this or bite this. And then I was like, wow, that seems so random. And then so I, then I looked it up and I was like, oh, soccer. And Sarah was talking to me about that. And, <laughs> you know, it, it, it does seem to have generated more interest for me because so many people are talking about it. And yeah. it's, I, I, I like it. And um, although I was watching the John Oliver talk about it and how, do you watch his show at all? I know, you know of, of it? it. You should watch that. Cause he, it's the, the one on HBO, right? Uh, I, I watched it's... on YouTube. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, but so he, you got he was options, Karen. He was talking about FIFA. And I was mm -hmm. like, I should really learn up about this. So Learn up? Learn up because... Let's, yeah, learn it up. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of learning up, Speaking I also do of... a, a show on Thursdays with Padre with where people learn stuff sometimes. Yeah, you know what? That, it's This is so silly. You know, I introduced you as Brian. He's the man behind the curtain. The strange but guy. That, but that's not actually true for anybody who watches... Um, uh, one show. One show. <laughs> Tell us about that show, actually. Before we get to your app cap, uh, let's talk about one of the shows that p someone can watch you host every single week as co-host with Padre. Yes. Uh, so I, I do know how. Um, and it start, we do little projects every week uh, that people can follow along and, and build themselves, hopefully. I feel like I gotta fix my hat. And also, part of the reason why I have the hat is I'm representing for, for poor Jason, who's uh, out today because he's not feeling very well. And uh, I TD all about Android with him and sometimes get to chime in on stuff. So that's always fun. And Ron, Ron's on that show too, Ron Rex. Yep, yep. Um, that is, yeah, you, so you're, I mean, you're, you're busy. You're all I over the place. I you're move all, around. You're all over the place. And then when Sarah uh, re doesn't remember that I didn't do the show last week and thinks that she needs a co-host, she invites me on here. So that's correct. That was nice. I thought, but you were the first person I thought of. That's cool. I thought, well, why not Brian? I saw I saw the the Why like not? 11:30 email. I was like, of course I'll do this show. Why <laughs> yeah. did she even ask? I'll just I, show I'm like, up. you have to be there anyway. Right. Like, <laughs> Why don't you just sit here? I just had to rotate chairs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, thanks, it's, it's, Anthony. Uh, thanks, Anthony. Anthony does a lot of my other shows again. He's super sick of me. Okay, so but, let's yeah. talk about your your app uh, your app pick of the week. So there there was a segue. Oh. Uh, with the know-how oh, to my app, which I'm uh -huh. not working on here. Um, if you like learning how to do things, then... like you might like on know-how, then you might <laughs> like this app. Is that a yes, good one? Yes, that's a good one. Okay. It's like you have a lot of practice at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you like know-how, uh, a place that I've gone to in the past to find cool projects uh, is a place called Instructables. And uh -huh. it's, a, it's a blog. Uh, it's been around since, I think, 2005. It's changed a lot, but it's a cool place where people uh, post do-it-yourself projects that you can follow along with. And they have a really slick iPad, iPad app for it. 
So it's kind of, I don't know, what, not flipboard, but it just, it pops up. It with has a, a little bit of a flipboard look, I guess. Yeah, it's got the you tiles can... and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you can just kind of scroll through a bunch of different projects that people are doing, and it ranges from fashion to food to tech, all sorts of things. It, it's, uh, it's kind of like the Etsy of do-it-yourself stuff. So the idea is, is these are all projects that walk you through how to create something. Is yes. that is that right? That is right. Okay. And like, this one is so random. Turn your French fries back into a potato. Well, I don't. I want to know how to do that. <laughs> that is like something. That's I That's really weird. For a long time, and it's not as elegant as you may have hoped. But oh, if boy. you started with French fries, and you want to make it back into a potato, you put it. It's a very. Oh, I see. Very simple steps here to follow. Step two: blend the French fries. Step. To step three, microwave the potatoes and then put them back into the the skin. Oh my gosh! So that's this one is so that that's a that's a bizarre one. It's sort of like do it just because you can, right? Type like, thing. I feel like this it's one's on the front page potato. because it's very it's very strange. Silly. But <laughs> but it can be done. But what's nice is as silly as that project was, it was still laid out really nice. You've yeah. got your you've got your steps. You've got photos. You've got the text down at the bottom. I mean, it's a it's yeah. a nice looking app. And it, you, you don't have to do something silly like that either. You can drill down into different uh, categories. So if you're interested in you know doing an Arduino project or you wanted to do a Raspberry Pi project, you could drill down and check that out. Um, so it's for me, it's a good place to look for ideas, um, and it helps a lot with the steps and stuff. And you don't always have to just follow the steps; you can kind of modify things to your to your taste. Um, there's a really cool one I wanted to show that was popping up, and now it's not. Oh, here it is! Like a do-it-yourself camera gimbal for a GoPro. This one is a little bit more useful for me. Sure. Because I love using the GoPro uh, cameras. And this guy has a list of parts. He has the prices. He has the steps involved. He even drew out some diagrams and stuff like that. And um, a lot of people post videos on YouTube of examples of what the finished oh, that's product cool. looks like. All right. So yeah, for any of the, the DIY people out there that are looking for a project, it's a great place to look through. And even if you don't necessarily want to build a, pro a project, it's fun to kind of look through and see what weird stuff people are coming up with, like putting your potato back together. I mean, so, that is just a weird one, isn't it? I would never have wanted to do it, but, and I still don't, but I'm glad someone out there did it. I think so too. You know, I actually, uh, Instructables, I'm not sure if we've talked about Instructables here on iPad today. Uh, it is something that I covered on, a, on an old episode of i5 well over a year ago. But the nice thing is that the DIY projects are constantly changing. Yeah, so it's always yeah. worth revisiting. Just have an app at the ready. If yeah. you feel like, hmm, I want to get, you know, want to make a mess in the garage or yeah. something, or build a table or yeah, make well, potatoes like... out of French fries. <laughs> <laughs> or you could do it yourself, too. Um, I don't know. I saw some of the reviews didn't really recommend uh, trying to use the app, the iPad app, to do your own uh, DIY project. Uh huh. But you can. Um, Upload your own stuff too. And oh, share good. It, so. so it's not just about looking at other people's uh, projects. You can. No. So work. you had the app where it aggregated sports, and this is the app that aggregates do it yourselves. There you go. I love it. Well, between the two of us, um, you can do a lot of sports watching and build yourself a GoPro, whatever that was. Whatever the heck that whatever was. Whatever the heck that was. <laughs> and the next time someone's like, Are you done with your fries? Say, I'd like to take them home. Thank you. And then you can make yourself a potato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's it's because so many Because who can situations. finish their fries anyway? You've so always got <laughs> a big old plate of fries. And think, yeah, I only it. these were in their original form. I Countless times I've gone over to friends' houses, it's like, you've already made fries out of these potatoes? <laughs> countless. Can, can when you doesn't them that happen? Jeez. And sew them back together I'd, in a Frankenstein if style. If only, if only. Bring it back to life. <sighs> On that weird note, you, uh, that was a good did, app. You did good introduce app. me as the strange guy, so I guess well, I think I uh, strange. I meant up. mysterious. It's I said strange, but I meant you know mysterious and very bright. <laughs> uh, but An the, enigma but, wrapped in a strange package. That's correct. Uh, Brian Burnett, thank you so much for yeah. being my co-host this totally. time. Totally. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're so welcome. Um, I would, you know, tell folks how to get a hold of you, but I think that, you know, you're gonna, just going to be back next week. You know, I'm not going to be here next week. Leo 
Um, and I have pre-recorded a couple of shows. So anybody who likes to watch us live, you might have noticed that there were some shows that Leo and I were recording here and there because he's on vacation and then I'm going to be on vacation. So so you guys get like a couple of weeks of just chilling. Right. I still have to edit it, but sure. that's not so bad. Yeah, no. <laughs> but, uh, but 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 what but we're not gonna we're not gonna miss any shows. We're mm. we're making sure you're all you're all happy, happy, happy. But if anything seems slightly out of order date wise, that might be why. But shouldn't shouldn't affect you too much. But uh, for now, that's it for this edition of iPad Today. Remember, you can subscribe at twit.tv slash IPT um, and look back on, on previous episodes and tell a friend and all that good stuff. And uh, you get to have a couple of weeks uh, just hanging out during, you know, from right. noon to two on uh, Mondays. I'm sure there'll Twiddling be... Twiddling your thumbs. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure there'll be something I have to fill my time with, so... I'm sure. Go ahead. All right, Brian, are you ready to howl? This is the part I was looking forward this to. Is part of, yeah, the entire show you've been looking forward to. Okay, bye. Okay. See you next week on iPad Today. Ow. Ow.